Biopolitics and necropolitics are two theoretical frameworks used to analyze the ways in which power is exercised over life and death within societies. These concepts are rooted in the work of prominent philosophers like Michel Foucault and Achille Mbembe and are widely applied in various fields, including political theory, sociology, anthropology, and postcolonial studies. Below is a comprehensive exploration of both concepts, their origins, key themes, and their implications in contemporary discussions. Biopolitics Origins and Definition The concept of biopolitics was first introduced by the French philosopher Michel Foucault during his lectures at the Collège de France in the late 1970s. Foucault used the term to describe a new form of power that emerged in the modern era, which is concerned not just with controlling territories or individuals but with managing life itself. This form of power, according to Foucault, is exercised through the regulation of populations, focusing on issues like health, hygiene, birth rates, mortality, and other aspects of life that contribute to the well-being of a society. Biopolitics represents a shift from sovereign power, which is characterized by the right of the ruler to decide life and death, to a form of power that aims to optimize the life of the population. This involves a range of practices and institutions, from public health policies to statistical methods of tracking populations, that are designed to monitor, regulate, and enhance life. Key themes in biopolitics. 1. Governance of life. Biopolitics emphasizes the governance of life processes, including reproduction, health, and mortality. The state, through various institutions and practices, intervenes in these processes to optimize the population's life. This is seen in public health campaigns, family planning initiatives, and vaccination programs, where the state plays a crucial role in managing the biological aspects of the population. 2. Normalization and control. Biopolitics involves the creation of norms and standards that define what is considered healthy, normal, and acceptable within a society. These norms are used to regulate individual behavior and to control the population. For instance, public health guidelines often establish standards for what is considered a healthy lifestyle, and these standards are enforced through various mechanisms, from educational campaigns to legal regulations. 3. Surveillance and Data Collection The practice of biopolitics relies heavily on surveillance and data collection. By gathering data on birth rates, death rates, disease prevalence, and other aspects of life, the state can make informed decisions about how to manage the population. This surveillance is not always overt but can be embedded in everyday practices, such as the collection of health data through medical records or the tracking of individuals through social security systems. 4. Bioeconomics Biopolitics also intersects with economic practices, where the optimization of life is linked to economic productivity. Healthy populations are seen as more economically productive, and thus, there is a strong incentive for states and corporations to invest in biopolitical measures that enhance the population's well-being. Necropolitics. Origins and Definition. Necropolitics, a term coined by Cameroonian philosopher Achille Mbembe in his 2003 essay Necropolitics, extends Foucault's concept of biopolitics to examine the power over death. While biopolitics is concerned with the governance of life, necropolitics focuses on the ways in which sovereign power is exercised through the control of death. It explores how certain lives are deemed expendable, and how the state or other authorities decide who may live and who must die. Mbembe argues that in contemporary societies, particularly in post-colonial contexts, power is often exercised through the creation of death worlds, spaces where individuals are subjected to conditions that make them living dead, such as in war zones, ghettos, and refugee camps. In these spaces, life is stripped of its value, and the right to life is subordinated to the power to kill. Key themes in necropolitics. 1. Sovereign power in the state of exception. Necropolitics is closely linked to the concept of sovereign power, particularly as it relates to the state of exception, a situation where normal laws and rights are suspended, and the sovereign exercises the power to decide who lives and who dies. This concept is evident in contexts such as war, colonialism, and totalitarian regimes, where the sovereign's power over life and death becomes explicit. 2. The production of death worlds. Necropolitics examines how certain populations are relegated to spaces where life is precarious, and death is a constant presence. These death worlds can be physical, such as in war-torn regions or impoverished neighborhoods, or they can be metaphorical, such as in the social exclusion of marginalized groups. In these spaces, the value of life is diminished, and individuals are subjected to violence, deprivation, and neglect. 3. Racialization and dehumanization. A key aspect of necropolitics is the way in which certain groups are dehumanized and racialized, making them more susceptible to violence and death. 
Mbembe argues that necropolitics is deeply intertwined with the history of racism and colonialism, where racialized bodies are often seen as expendable. This dehumanization justifies the use of violence against these groups, as their lives are considered less valuable than those of others. 4. The politics of martyrdom and suicide. Necropolitics also explores the politics of martyrdom and suicide, particularly in the context of anti-colonial struggles and contemporary forms of resistance. In some cases, individuals or groups may embrace death as a form of resistance, using their own deaths as a weapon against oppressive regimes. This is seen in acts of suicide bombing or self-immolation, where the act of dying is used to make a political statement. The intersection of biopolitics and necropolitics. While biopolitics and necropolitics are often seen as distinct concepts, they are closely interconnected. Both frameworks deal with the management of life and death, but from different perspectives. Biopolitics focuses on the optimization and regulation of life, while necropolitics examines the power over death and the conditions under which life is made expendable. In many cases, biopolitics and necropolitics operate simultaneously, with certain populations being subject to biopolitical measures aimed at enhancing life, while others are relegated to necropolitical spaces where death is prevalent. For example, in a globalized world, wealthy populations in developed countries may benefit from advanced healthcare systems and biopolitical measures that optimize their well-being, while impoverished populations in developing countries may be subjected to necropolitical conditions, such as war, famine, and disease. Moreover, the distinction between biopolitics and necropolitics is often blurred in contexts where the optimization of life for some involves the destruction of life for others. This is evident in situations such as genocide, where the extermination of one group is justified as a means of preserving the life of another. It is also seen in contemporary issues like migration, where the biopolitical management of borders and populations results in the creation of death worlds for refugees and migrants who are denied entry and left to die in harsh conditions. Contemporary relevance. The concepts of biopolitics and necropolitics have gained renewed relevance in contemporary discussions, particularly in light of global events such as the COVID-19 pandemic, the refugee crisis, and ongoing conflicts in various parts of the world. These events have highlighted the ways in which life and death are governed by political power, and how certain lives are valued over others. For instance, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the biopolitical measures used by states to manage the health of their populations, from lockdowns and vaccination campaigns to the allocation of medical resources. At the same time, the pandemic has also revealed the necropolitical aspects of governance, where marginalized populations, such as the elderly, the poor, and racial minorities, have been disproportionately affected by the virus and have been subjected to conditions that increase their risk of death. Similarly, the refugee crisis has underscored the necropolitical dynamics at play in the management of borders and migration. Refugees and migrants are often relegated to death worlds, where they face violence, deprivation, and the constant threat of death as they attempt to cross borders and seek asylum. In conclusion, biopolitics and necropolitics are crucial frameworks for understanding the ways in which power is exercised over life and death in contemporary societies. They offer valuable insights into the mechanisms of governance that regulate life, as well as the conditions under which certain lives are rendered expendable. As global challenges continue to evolve, these concepts will remain essential for analyzing the complex dynamics of power, life, and death in the modern world.